without change, something sleeps inside us. The sleeper must awaken. Hello and welcome back to another We Ourselves video. And today I want to talk about a problem with legacy in the black community, in my community, because I was interested in it when it comes to this whole idea of Blade and T'Challa and how many in our community are going for this one and done mindset. And then I get a comment from somebody insisting that what Wesley Snipe already did was legacy. And they were responding to my response to a video where somebody said, well, there's only one blade. And I didn't argue with the person. I just said, okay, well, fine. Well, if there's only one blade, then when Wesley Snipes dies, that's it. There's no legacy. And somebody took exception to that. And they said, well, what he's did is already legacy. And it's like, no, it's not. It's foundation. And it's really striking that people don't see the difference because there is a difference. And it isn't my opinion, it's what actually exists when it comes to comic book heroes and live action versions of them. And what many of us wanna do, and I don't say many of us, some like the one and done mentality. They like the cult of personality. Even though in our faces, in this timeline that we exist on, we know what it means for a live action version of a character to have legacy. It means that that character transcends any individual iteration. It means that that character, that brand is there to be reimagined for a new generation. And the thing about it is we celebrate these things. We go in disproportionate numbers to the movies and pay money to see these things. But yet when it comes to us, curiously, we flip logic on its head and argue the exact opposite. We argue for us having less. And that's what I mean by we have a problem with legacy. And I want to talk about this created psyop, this controversy between Wesley Snipes' version of Blade and Mahershala Ali's attempt to reboot it. No, Wesley Snipes did not create legacy. He set a foundation, just like Chadwick Boseman set a foundation. And you had other people, unfortunately, who looked like them come in to stop the building on that foundation. And soon the foundation itself would be ripped up, which is what they're doing with T'Challa. They didn't just stop from somebody from building on that, meaning having another actor come in and play the part. No, they're going in and ripping out the foundation by getting rid of the character as he existed, totally getting rid of him as far as they can. And so that's what I wanna talk about. Because when it comes to legacy and comic book characters, we know what that represents. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, Aquaman <laughs> on the Marvel side, you could say that um, Professor X and Magneto, they have started a legacy because you've now had two different actors play both of those characters in live action films. You had Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen who played uh, Magneto and Professor X. And then you had Michael Fassbender who did a younger version of Magneto successfully. And you had James McAvoy who successfully did Professor X. So they've started a legacy, but perhaps the biggest one on the Marvel side is you have Spider-Man. And in modern times, we're in the last 20 or so years, you've had three actors play a live action version of Spider-Man in the cinema. And then you had them come together in one movie. And I want to talk about this problem that we have with Legacy because we are doing the exact opposite. Again, we've gone and saw these movies. We go disproportionate given our percentage of the population and the, and the percentage of us who go to these movies, we disproportionately watch them on streaming services and go to the movies to support them. So we know what real legacy is. So why, when it comes to the black characters, do we do the exact opposite? And just to be fair to people who might see what Wesley Snipes did already as legacy, just to be fair, there is an expanded definition of legacy that can include something like that. But let's look at what legacy is. The basic definition is a gift by will, especially of money or other personal property. And in the case of IPs, it's intellectual property. Something transmitted or received from an ancestor or predecessor. Again, the idea of the true meaning of legacy is you're passing something down. It's not one and done. So what is Wesley Snipe passing down? Now, the company made money off of him, and they used that money to create the other Marvel properties, which ironically have endured. X-Men has endured for 20 plus years, and now another iteration is going to be in the MCU. But funny how people who say that Wesley Snipes set up a legacy, his was done after the first three movies, it's done. 
he hasn't persisted for 20 years on the screen like the X-Men. Yeah, and so they said, in, in basic meaning, legacy is a gift or money or other personal property that's granted by the terms of a will, often a substantial gift that needs to be properly managed. This is tangible benefit. But the word is used much more broadly as well. So for instance, much of Western civilization, law, philosophy, aesthetics, could be called an undying legacy of ancient Greece. But please note, people, and this is not my view of what legacy is in the real world. This is what the industry is doing. They aren't going with the expanded view of legacy, the feel-good, heroic, whatever, non-tangible view of it. They are sticking with the basic definition, even down to the part about this wealth requiring a manager. Lucasfilm was worth $4 billion to um, Lucas and he sold it to Disney, but he appointed Kathleen Kennedy as the president of Lucasfilm. So that legacy is being managed by Kathleen Kennedy. Marvel, that legacy, all of those characters is being managed by Kevin Feige. And Bob Iger is over all of them and all of these can be replaced. They're talking about getting rid of Kathleen Kennedy or her retiring and a new manager coming in to take care of the legacy. Pixar was under Lasseter until they ran him out and then they brought in somebody else. We are literally seeing them stay with the original meaning of legacy, not this expanded feel-good version of it. No, the literal version where a legacy is something of immense value that is passed down and the owners of these legacies, they are doing it and they are bringing in managers to manage it. That's real legacy, folks. Not this crazy expanded view, but somehow we've latched onto the expanded view, which takes us to focusing on the real person and not the property. The tangible property that can produce wealth, can generate revenue in perpetuity into the foreseeable future. And so I wanna talk about this and I wanna use a movie which kills any argument talking about Wesley Snipes already created a legacy. And Spider-Man No Way Home is the argument killer. And it has certain similarities to the argument that's going on with Mahershala Ali's attempted reboot and everybody who is running around saying that there's only one blade and that's Wesley Snipes. First of all, Marvel itself outsmarted itself. We are literally existing in a multiverse. Even in Deadpool, where you have multiple versions of both of those characters, why he couldn't have Mahershala Ali and Wesley Snipes in the same movie is ridiculous. And there are some of us who are saying that even if Wesley Snipes get a fourth movie, there's no reason why you can't have Mahershala Ali in there because both of them have already been introduced into the MCU. Mahershala Ali's version of Blade was introduced in Eternals, making it official. And then Ryan Reynolds came along and he went and got Wesley Snipes and he brought him into the MCU. And I've seen some people saying that this Deadpool movie is not mainstream MCU. The hell it isn't. You have the TVA, which is part of the mainstream MCU and is gonna be part of Secret Wars. This Deadpool movie is part of the mainstream MCU now. That was the whole point of him doing this movie. So he introduced a variant of Blade. So you have the both versions of Blade now officially in the MCU. So why are we talking to either or? But again, I wanna go to Spider-Man No Way Home. There are a lot of people who do not like Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And there are people who preferred Tobey Maguire. They kind of liked him as a good Peter Parker. And then there are those who like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. And then you have those who like Tom Holland. So there are people who like these different versions of Spider-Man. But look at what Marvel managed to do. They came out with the movie where they put all three versions in the same movie and almost made $2 billion. Those who preferred Andrew Garfield or who preferred Tobey Maguire, they still went to see the movie and they pushed the movie over the top. But more importantly, look at what happened. Those who liked Tobey Maguire said that he never got that fourth film. Does that not sound like the people that are saying there's only one Blade and he needs to have his fourth movie so he can have his send off just like Logan had? Okay, fine. But look at what the fans of Spider-Man did. They are calling for it, and, and some are still calling for Tobey Maguire to get his fourth movie, but they're not canceling Tom Holland. Those who think that Andrew Garfield should get a third movie because Tom Holland and 
Tobey Maguire got three Spider-Man movies. They are calling for that, but they're not canceling Tom Holland or Tobey Maguire. For these fans of these Spider-Man as played by these three white men in this white character, they can ask for justice to be done for a previous iteration of the character while not destroying or trying to get rid of the current one, even if they don't like the current one as much as they like the original. For them, it's not an either or, it's and. And that's why I'm saying Spider-Man No Way Home is the ultimate argument killer for anybody who wants to run around and say there's only one blade and there can't be another. It also undermines what Ryan Coogler and Fulio producer <laughs> um, Nate Moore did and Kevin Feige with his iteration of T'Challa was so iconic that we're going to retire to Jersey. That's basically what they're saying. It's stupid and you're throwing away money and everybody knows it, but there's a reason why they do it. And don't come to me and say, well, Spider-Man's different because Tom Holland already had two movies under his belt. That just proves my point. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are still alive. In fact, some people wondered if they brought Spider-Man into the MCU if they would get Andrew Garfield because he only had two movies. He's still young enough to do that character for, for the next several years. But no, they casted Tom Holland. And like I said, some people don't like him because they think he's more of an Iron Lad rather than a real Peter Parker. But look at how they were able to have their cake and eat it too. They acknowledge that they can give Tobey Maguire a fourth movie because they think they're all viable. And there's unfortunately a lot of us who have bought into this idea that if you bring another iteration of Blade, then somehow you're destroying what Wesley Snipe did. No, what he set up was the foundation and how you get to legacy, which is what Tom Holland did. He built legacy because he was now the third live action iteration of Spider-Man. And you literally saw him get advice from the other two <laughs> versions of him. That is how you build legacy, folks. That is how you build legacy. It, it, it's like you see a building being constructed. They show you the artist's renderings. Of course, you know it. The inside could be reworked and stuff like that. So it can be used for multiple purposes over decades. And it's like, we see that and we watch them pour this beautiful foundation and maybe put up some of the skeleton of the structural work. But then we, some of us in our community, we then rush in and we run off all the construction people. We sabotage the equipment. We knock it all over, we, ki we kick it over, and we stop all building on this foundation. We don't let that vision come to pass. We stop at the foundation and then we worship the foundation. And I like what Pam Entertainment said, if there's death anywhere involved in it, then you get the death peddlers who come in because they wanna cry over something. And that's what we do. So yearly we come in and we, we, we idolize the foundation, we cry over it, and then we lament what could have been, even though you are the ones who are rejecting the artist's rendering. You did not let the building on the foundation happen. And eventually the foundation gets pitted, weathered, and eventually it's broken and taken up and then somebody else comes and builds something else. And then you're really crying because you lost everything. Spider-Man No Way Home represents a multi-use building that has lasted over 20 years and had three different iterations. And then they managed to bring all three iterations together and make even more money. T'Challa, gone. Blade, when Wesley Snipes die, if we listen to the people who say there's only can be one Blade, gone. That foundation, it will be all there is. There will not be any other iterations. It will not be passed to the next actor. It will not be passed to the next generation. It will not be revamped for a new generation so that it endures into the future. That's damn legacy. What we're worshiping is the foundation. And if we go with that, that's it, that's one and done, then we will destroy any legacy that could have come from that first foundation, that first iteration. That's why I said, Spider-Man No Way Home is the ultimate argument killer. One of the last things that I want to do is I want to talk about two examples that showed legacy. And the first is Henry Cavill. He understood what legacy was all about when he finally passed <laughs> the cape and the mantle of Superman on to another actor who was going to take over from him. And of course, we know that's um, Corn Sweat who's going to be doing the new Superman under James Gunn. He's had to go through this twice. When he left The Witcher, he also had to pass the mantle 
on to another actor because he understands that legacy when it comes to comic book characters and fantasy characters like this. It's about the characters and the IP and the franchise. It's not about the actors individually and what they can bring to it. Cavill did a post on Instagram where he said that he's turning over the mantle of the White Wolf to Liam Hemsworth. When it comes down to Superman, he said the same thing, basically. Superman is still around. The IP exists. Everything he stands for exists and examples he set for us are still here. But my turn to wear the cape has passed. But what Superman stands for never will. That is legacy. Because when it comes to these comic book characters, it's about the character. Chadwick Boseman understood that he wanted people to see the character, not him. And the second thing that I wanted to end with has to do with the sign off from the sixth Star Trek movie, Star Trek, The Undiscovered Country. And most people know, but there might be some who don't realize that the sign off at the end of Endgame, where all the characters, the actors signed their real names, and you saw it on the screen, that was taken from this movie. And in my opinion, this movie did it better. But the thing that I wanna mention here, again, is another example of what legacy means to the industry. And I want to end with Captain Kirk's words as played by William Shatner. And to me, this represents real legacy. And he says, Captain's Log, this is the final cruise of the Starship Enterprise under my command. This ship and her history, in other words, the legacy, will shortly become the care of another crew. That is legacy. And that is how the industry sees legacy. He said the same thing that Henry Cavill did. If you take out the Enterprise and the ship and you instead say this character and the cape in the terms of Superman will shortly become the care of another actor. And that's exactly what we've seen. Because instead of focusing in on the actor, which is what we have been led to do, they focus on the IP, the character, the franchise, and that carries them forward into the future and that produces revenue in the future. And I just wanna end with this visual. When we as a people, and there's too many of us to do this, but when we come to the crossroads and we can go left to right, and when we look down the right, we see Legacy Boulevard. And when we look down that boulevard, we see all of these buildings, high rises, things that have been added onto over the decades. And if we drive down that road, we'll see all of these characters, these IPs, these franchises. And when we get in front of each of these individual buildings, we'll look and see that it extends way back from the road because there are additions, there are add-ons, and we see studios, and we see production companies, and we see iterations, we see television shows, we see multiple movies, we see additions that were added when different actors and crews were brought in. That's what we see when we go down Legacy Boulevard. But for many of us, when everybody else in the industry turn right and go down that boulevard and pass all these buildings that were built over the decades by the revenue that was generated by real Legacy, Many of us turn left and we go down Memorial Drive. And down Memorial Drive, you don't see buildings that have existed for decades. What you see are memorials. You see statues. You see tributes to individuals, not just entertainment, but religious, political, activists, all of that. We have memorials. And when we go down Memorial Drive, we'll see the actors and we'll see the roles that they played like chat with Bozeman, like what's happening with Wesley Snipes, and like what's happening with other actors who still are alive and well, but as we go by, we see there's already a place built for them, and there's this invisible hand that's writing in each role that they play. Because these roles that they play, they will never be located on Legacy Boulevard. There will never be institutions built from the revenue from these roles, because they're just roles and they are footnotes for the individual actors. That is what we do when we turn left and we leave legacy, real legacy, in the rear view mirror because we want to drive down Memorial Drive. We want to be in our feelings. We want to cry for somebody. We want to lament that what's never happened, not realizing that we are in the process of 
carving into the granite for these actors that are still alive. We're actually building that memorial for them because we can't wait to memorialize them. Meanwhile, the rest of the industry, they turned right at the crossroads and they're down on Legacy Boulevard and they're going in and out of these buildings that were built from the real legacy that these characters produce. The real income, the real families that are supported, the real production crews, the actors, the costumers, coaches, the directors, the producers, the sound people. All of those people are in those buildings that have been built over the decades because those IPs, those characters, those franchises continue. That's what you see here. The legacy of the enterprise and its history became the care of another crew. And when they revamped the show, they came out with a new show called The Next Generation the legacy it was a new enterprise and a new crew and once that was successful they used that to launch deep space nine which wasn't enterprise but the enterprise was there to give them a send-off then you have voyager all of these went for seven years 24 episodes a year then you came back around to Enterprise again, but it was an earlier Enterprise because the real legacy is Enterprise and the franchise, not the actors, some of who are still alive, but we've had new ones. Then you had J.J. Abrams in 2009 come out with Star Trek, and it was a new Enterprise, and it was a new Kirk and a new Spock and McCoy, and the real actors were, were mesmerized by how well these new ones did. Nobody thought that you could replace William Shatner but you saw Chris Pine come in and play Kirk because the IP existed. That's down Legacy Boulevard. And so that's what I wanna leave you with because we are actively seeing people in our community do this to Wesley Snipes. They're going to memorialize this man and they're going to memorialize Blade and it's gonna be a footnote on that granite capstone one day down Memorial Drive. And what it won't be it won't be a building that houses people, artisans, artists, other people who can come and play that character. We're not going to build a structure down Legacy Boulevard that will endure into the future because we've accepted the broader, weaker view of Legacy. And so that's what I want to say in this first part. I'm going to explain in the second part why we have been led to accept this weak view of legacy. But that's in the next one. As always, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next video. The sleeper has awakened!